when it's done right, there's rarely better, more memorable telly than Christmas telly. It's provided us with many iconic moments over the years. And so, this festive season, we're taking a look at three very different Christmas specials. First off, it's back to 1984 for ITV's Saturday Starship. With Star Wars mania still running wild, Saturday Starship saw Tommy Boyd launched into space with Bonnie Langford. Lasting just a single series, hardly any episode survived, but we do have Starship's lone Christmas show. Oh, oh Christmas is such a business, isn't it? Oh, I can't, can't, I've only just found the end of the sellotape. Can you keep it down in the gallery? I'm trying to organise the beginning of the... Boyd's theatrics aside, there's a huge party atmosphere throughout. I'm going to be showing you some party tricks and games and things that are going to make Auntie want to go out into the garden and have a breath of fresh air a little earlier than she did last year, remember that? At points it sounds like a Bachian orgy's going on just off screen. I'll do, to find out everything that we got lined up for you this morning, it's going to be a really busy show. Guests this week are Terry Nutkins, On Safari's Christopher Biggins and Caligula. Starship's approach was to pack the studio with as many kids as humanly possible, rendering even simple cooking segments like the crowd scenes in fucking Gandhi. They're even holding up signs like it's the Attitude Era. Is this Saturday Starship or Gremlins? Look, one of them's chewing on a cable. Having to shout to be heard, Boyd runs through the entries of a Christmas card competition. There's uh, Bet Lynch there, which was done by Carol Spooner. This is one of my favourites, Daley Thompson. And here he is, wait for it, put in the shot. Ho ho, put in the shot. Steven Spielberg, and inside, there's a gremlin, which if you get to see over Christmas is a pretty spooky film, I can tell you. See it? You're living it. And this is a Christmas card, which Ruth Murphy, who's eight, did for all the children of Ethiopia, which is nice, isn't it? Speaking of well wishes... A cartoon in just a second. Well, first of all, Merry Christmas from a pop star. Hi, this is Brian May. I'd like to wish you a great Christmas, a great Merry Christmas from Queen, and lots of great stuff in the new year. Have fun, all right? Thanks, Brian, mate. You too. P.S. I hope your arse is better. These messages pop up over the show, with greetings from David Essex, and a staring kid who may or may not have a gun in Essex's back. You wish them a Merry Christmas, or you won't live to see it. Slade. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. The flying pickets, pretending to headbutt a child. And Duran Duran. Hi, I'm John. And I'm Roger. And along with the rest of Duran Duran, we'd like to wish all the viewers of Saturday Starship a very Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. More of an Easter bloke, are you, Rog? You know what you don't see much of these days? Silly string. That's because Starship used all of it up. All crammed in there like that. It's a fire safety nightmare. One cameraman sparks a B&H and the whole lot will go up. Sadly, the mania is such that this lad's story of bravery gets lost beneath the noise. Tell me what you got your award for. What happened? Oh, I was playing with my cousin with a biscuit. And it was, it was quite a big old station, wasn't it? Because um, when it's just about to boil, so my shut it, you know. He's struggling to get out of it. And was, had a few stitches in his back and his legs. They've been joined in space by the characters from Button Moon, including this posh jelly. And here we have, hello. Take it away. Which leads to a very lengthy dance sequence. Are you on your way to Button Moon? Incredibly, not only does this hold the children's attention, at one point, 
a moment of peril elicits genuine screams of distress. Wonder what the green room was like. Posh Jelly sat chatting with Ian McCulloch from Echo and the Bunny Men. Like all rock stars on these things, he's got the disorientated manner of someone who's been parachuted into an active war zone. Thank you. Because, um, are you alright there? Because, um, uh... But Boyd knows how to talk to cool, hungover rockers. I'll show you something that's fun to do with a banana. Not that, dirty sod. It's that prank where you poke a needle through and it falls apart when you open it, which was a massively popular here's something to do in the 80s and never worked. So that when auntie and uncle after Christmas dinner have a banana, they faint or something like that. Poor McCulloch can't even cope with the needle. Can't have this then. Can't you? Well, I'll get mine done anyway. These shows are jam-packed full of stuff. Nigel making mince pies. <laughs> Bonnie doing a speed run of happy birthday to an audience member. Happy birthday to you, Sarah! Happy birthday to you! Brilliant! Linda Nolan advertising a panto. That's right, I'm, um, I'm actually Dick Whittington and I'm Michael Barrymore starring in the panto. He's, he's absolutely mental. <laughs> and dress like if Brutus the Barber Beefcake was in June, the world disco dancing champion. How long are you going to be the disco champion for, Ricard? One year. One year? Yeah. Marvellous. Do you reckon he got on well with the jelly backstage? Tommy Boyd is a very high energy presence, part presenter, part observational comedian, in that, aren't older relatives funny? Way. Tell you what I thought we'd do, tell you what I thought we'd do, give us a bit of room, give us a bit of room. And mum and dad trying to get to the sofa after Christmas lunch, ready, in three, <laughs> Trippiest moment by far comes with something called the singing hot pots. A bit of fun here. <laughs> This was the B-side to the Seven Inch of Button Moon's theme song, which I now recall I actually owned as a child. By the way, the lead singer's fucking a kettle. I fall and for a kettle, whistling through the night. I love to hear her sing, she's my one and only play. Big cheer for the Hot Pots, thank you. Well done singing Hot Pots. I'll tell you what we'll do. Sadly, the illusion is shattered in a chat with Button Moon's puppeteer. Does anyone believe in ghosts? I do. Yeah. Oh. That'd be a nice one to frighten Auntie after she's had her doze after Christmas. Like That's that right. This man is obsessed with aunties after Christmas dinner. When films took ages to come out on video, they could get away with the worst Ghostbusters costume you've ever seen. Seemingly made by someone whose nan described to them the trailer she'd seen when walking past Curry's window in the rain. I don't want to interrupt anything, but there is a Ghostbuster behind you. Mm. Uh, oh, well, we got rid of the ghost mm. anyway, so we're okay, thanks. I've got one. It's an ugly looking spot. Oh. I've got it, I've got it. Where's the other spot? I've got the spot here. I've got a slime, Jim. There we go. But they don't just celebrate Christmas in Britain, you know? Round about Christmas time, the Swedish people, Sweden and the Swedes, send us lots of Christmas trees. I wonder if you know what we send them. Oh, well, let me think. Box of Quality Street? Nice framed picture of the Queen? Well, the answer seems to be acid rain. Oh. An organisation called Watch, which I'm sure a lot of you are members of, it's a, it's a, a wildlife organisation, are organising something called Acid Drops. Last time I did that at Christmas, I thought the turkey was trying to seduce me, and that tiny little Ross Kemp's were coming out of the crackers. I've not been invited back. As we start to wind down, 
anarchist Boyd arms the presenters with silly string and party poppers and raids the production gallery. Follow me. Right, come on. Although the tech isn't really up to it. I've seen clearer snuff films. Take handheld, take handheld, take handheld. And a Merry Christmas to engineering. Merry Christmas to engineering. And get them all over them. Absolutely all over them. We close with Bonnie promoting her new single and Tommy Boyd inviting everyone to picture a child's family defecating and their dirty anuses. Hey! Brilliant. I don't know what your family are going to be using. It'll probably be newspaper, won't it, over Christmas now? What have you done with all the toilet paper? But anyway, not to worry about that. He leaves us with some advice, plus another mention of aunties. Now listen, have yourselves a great really Christmas. Horrible. I know everybody says that, but you have to work hard to have a good time. You really do. It doesn't just happen. So think about it. Get involved with those party games. Be nice to auntie. And see if that neighbour who lives up the street who lives on their own is all right, OK? And thank you for joining us. And we go out on a good old Chaz and Dave festive knees up about a man leaving his wife for another woman. It's always dicey doing medleys from the old ragtime days. I didn't catch it the first time either. Let's pull things back with one final celebrity greeting. Yes, it's me again. I'm wishing you a very good rock and roll Christmas from all the gang and a happy new year! From here, we're jumping forwards to 1992 for a show with an entirely different demographic. Get Stuffed was a cooking show whose intended audience consisted of a stereotype which was everywhere back then but you don't really hear of nowadays when the cost of further educations mired everyone in horrible debt the trope of the lazy student the gad about lives of these festering malingerers made up hack comics routines for about two decades they only get out of bed to watch countdown don't they up until 3am eating cornflakes with lager poured on. And that's the time Get Stuffed went out, when even those in the post-pub hinterlands had called it a night, when audiences were assumed to be drunk or desperately alone, wanking themselves to sleep on the sofa, and ad breaks were filled with chat lines. The thing about lazy students and dull scum, yeah, is they can't even cook a bloody pot noodle, can they? Get Stuffed sought to teach these shiftless wretches how to prepare good food on a budget and in a simple language they could understand, namely, shouted at full volume with an infantile soundtrack of slide whistles and dog toys. If the show leaves any legacy, it's as a pinpoint parody in that sketch from the day to day with Graham Linehan before he got obsessed with toilets. Now on Central, a Get Stuffed Christmas special. Get stuffed! Get stuffed! Get stuffed! Woo, it's a Get Stuffed Christmas special! And we got a special for you! This is gonna be rough going, as every person is the most annoying one in their group. The loud, wacky one. The self-proclaimed ledge. The sort of bloke who'd address the gas man as dude. But now, get funky, get Christmas truffles! Yeah! <laughs> Cook along at home with on-screen instructions. Make your own Christmas truffles! You need plain chocolate! Come on, yeah. Icing sugar and chocolate strands! Trifle sponges! Oh, Eggies! <laughs> bah! £12! You'll note, when I said this was soundtracked by someone squeezing on a dog toy, I meant that literally. Here we are in our lovely kitchen, and here's... What a day! 
<laughs> Don't bash them with the thing, use your fingers, you silly woman. Silly woman. This chocolate here, mm -mm -mm. break them into small pieces, leave the chocolate to melt, and then get the butter in. <laughs> Over here, some things. <laughs> now. They oh, that's lovely. Rising sugar. Ooh, lots more. Ages later. <laughs> oh, lovely. Absolutely exhausting. Feels like you've run a marathon sitting through two minutes of this. On top of my Christmas list, I've scrubbed out Castle Greyskull on a PS5 and replaced it with One Way Ticket to Dignitas. Two yokes! Two yokes! Hey! If you're a vegetarian and you're fed up with nut roast at Christmas, then get some of this down ya! Now your Christmas corsets! The quote unquote normal people they picked were like a cruel political cartoon of lefties from a conservative newspaper. Happy, Happy Christmas. Christmas! I'm Sue. And I'm Simon. And we're going to make nutty Christmas courgettes. Nutty yeah. Christmas nutty courgettes! Christmas. Basically, this is a guide to life for absolute cretins by absolute cretins. How to buy the best cheapest wine in the shop! Yo, Jason Bay. Hi there. £2.50. And that's how to buy the best, cheapest wine in the shop, yeah! Here we are back in the kitchen. How are we going to make our nutty Christmas projects? First of all, we've got to go and wash our hands. For the first time since 1983. <clears throat> Next! Get those projects covered in egg and stick them in the pan, man. Take that, authority. Comedy characters, the mystery chefs, show us things like how to chop garlic, because, you know, we're thick. This is how to chop garlic! Chop garlic! Top and tail and garlic! The garlic. There we are. Layer of peanuts, put some peanuts on there. Back from a break where Jeff Goldblum shills booze, we're learning about Hogmanay, which is an informed, considered look at the Scottish. Hi, we're the Mr. Chefs, and this is Ali. from Scotland. And we're going to find out everything we ever wanted to know about Haggis! Haggis! Haggis. Okay. Have you had Haggis before? <laughs> I've quite a new. So, I'm a Haggis for Pug Mini. Okay! The news, Jimmy. Another young couple teach us English how to cook all north of the border. Happy Christmas! Happy Christmas. So this is Jimmy. And this is Jimmy. Great, thank you very much. Jimmy. We'll have to find one of those. Well, hello, please. okay. It's lovely, jumbly. Okay! One pound fifty! Cheaper than a turkey! Ooh. Yummy, yummy, yummy! The constant reminders to wash your hands infer they believe their audience to be absolutely filthy. Wash your wee hands, Jimmy! Boris should have played these bits at the Covid press conferences. <laughs> On careful consideration, I've decided these are the worst people in the world. A bit of sword dancing! Come on, Sam! <laughs> Ooh, look wow, at that! Look at that! Looks like a big gonad! <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Listen here, you groovy bunch, because we're going to make mince pies and punch! But look at his pants, just check out the size! That's where he keeps his mincy pies! I've changed my mind, it's this pair, explaining how to make mulled wine. Hurry up! Come on! We want it oh, now! Half a lemon's a fantastic amount of lemon! Yeah, lemon in the pan! Lovely mulled wine, pourry, pourry in the glasses! You no, know, you know what, no. It's these knobbers, doing the mince pies. Now, grease that tin with some of this super margarine from the planet Xylon! Get your mints in your bottoms! <laughs> Get mints in all your bottoms! <laughs> What are the three sexualities? Tops, bottoms, ten! All right, I have had enough. Get Stuffed has done a reverse Scrooge on me, and now I hate Christmas. We'll watch one more show, but as things stand, I'm ditching this whole rotten festival. Finally, we're watching a TV movie that went out on NBC in America on December the 21st, 1985. The visual quality is appalling, but as we know, that just makes things better. Mr T was at his peak of fame here. 
the 80 minutes pomp, and earlier that year having co-headlined the first WrestleMania with Hulk Hogan. When this aired, he was one of the most famous men on the planet. Entitled A Christmas Dream, this is the perfect vehicle for his brand of gruff but earnest life lessons. Part Christmas Carol retelling, part Mr. T motivational video, the plot is he's a street Santa called Benny who encounters a little boy, played by Emmanuel Lewis from sitcom Webster, which was the deep impact to different strokes Armageddon. And the kids are right, little Ebenezer. A kid that doesn't care too much about Christmas. And a lot of people agree with me. Look at all the people who walk right by you. You think they care about Christmas? Hey, what's your name? And who you with? My name is Billy Johnson, and I'm all alone. I have no family. No, oh, that's sad. Just my parents and me. That's not how that works. Yeah, I'm an orphan. I was just talking to me mum and dad about it. But his parents aren't into Christmas. Then I am coming to my play school tomorrow. Maybe they caught that episode of Get Stuffed. It's rubbed off on him too. And in a nod to the A-team, Mr T tells him he's got a bad attitude. Like trading places, they make a wager of one dollar that T will get him to love Christmas by day's end. I'll bet you, I've got a dollar. Okay, it's a bet. Mr. T drops him off at a toy shop to wander around by himself. See, he's got some good in him. He's not beyond saving. Everything seems shot to emphasise the tininess of Emmanuel Lewis, although he's actually 13 here, with a growth disorder. It's here he meets the first celebrity guest, David Copperfield, a man with the most wig-like hair possible, doing the same old patter every presenter does with little kids. Are you married? No, no. You married? Some people are just good at talking to children. My girlfriend broke my heart once. This is the best part of all. Oh, I so wish I could do magic like you. <laughs> Billy, would I do her illusion? Calm down, Job. Now dressed as Benny from Crossroads, Mr. T takes him on a handsome cab ride through New York. But little Billy's a right miserable bollocks moaning because his parents kill themselves keeping a roof over his head. You know what I am? I'm a latchkey kid. Oh, what do you folks do all day? They work. Oh. And because they bought him a skateboard. What could you learn falling on your rear end? Hey, you learn to get up and try again. That's the best way to learn. You also get a sore rear end. Stop talking about arses. It's Christmas. That'd be a nice one to frighten Auntie after she's had her doze after Christmas lunch. That's right. And aunties. Then it's off to Radio City Music Hall to meet another of Mr. T's friends. Hiya, Louis. Hiya, Benny. This is my friend Billy. <clears throat> Careful that bloke doesn't mistake Billy for another puppet. You also get a story in. Even the dummy berates him for not being Christmassy. But you're a dummy. From what I hear, you're a bit of a dummy yourself. Oh no, not another person on me about Christmas spirit. And there's a surprise. What's just coming up? Hey, sucker. Merry Christmas. <laughs> yeah, Merry Christmas to you too, little guy. When Mr. T sends Billy into the dressing room of a singer friend, it suddenly gets really heavy. Hey, what do you think? Is he getting the Christmas spirit yet? I don't think he's so yet. We keep trying. Thanks, Buster. Because I don't want to lose this one. How many kids has he been through this with? What happened to them? Did they get so un that they died? 
I'm afraid he didn't make it. The chronic mince pie deficiency was just too much for his little body. Accompanied on the piano by Dave Lee Travis, Mr. T's singer friend tries to win him over, forcing him to keep that uncomfortable one-on-one -on -one eye contact all the way through, like a lap dance. Then he nods off watching some dancers rehearse, leading to a pretty surreal dream sequence. in which his disembodied head floats above them like that bit on the train in Dracula. If you're stuck for gift ideas, the ad break might be useful. Want to give someone something really special this holiday? Give them me, Carl Sontheimer, father of the Cuisinart food processor. Don't forget to put some air holes in the box. Everything culminates in a big Christmas party with all of Mr. T's friends, though unfortunately not Howling Mad Murdoch smashing through the ceiling in a chopper. Will people exchange a lot of different gifts at, at this party? No, they all exchange the same kind of present. Friendship, and it's the best gift in the world. I'll take the cash equivalent, thanks. Sometimes he sounds like a John Lewis ad written by mobsters. Like what? You wake up Christmas morning and find your mother and father alive and healthy. Merry Christmas. They force Billy to do a number of his own. And after a final ad break, T's done up real nice to tell us about the nativity. We all know a lot about that night, almost 2,000 years ago. The most famous night in the history of the world. I wouldn't go that far. Sorry, carry on. It's the most frequently told story in history, but there's no version quite like Mr. T's. You believe what this man said to Mary? Surely, there was no way to treat a lady, especially a mother-to-be. Mother, there is no other like mother, so treat her right. what those presents were. They were gold, frankincense, and mirrors. For to us, a child was born, a son was given, and his name was to be called... Oh, I know this one. It's Jesus. Wonderful. Counselor. The mighty God. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Close enough. Wonder who these latecomers are. But there's still just one thing you don't know about that night. And that is, that the baby smiled. Lesser men than me may crumble at such a cloying display, but as you'll know, I'm made of stone. But all of us, right here and right now, should make a promise that during this Christmas season, and every Christmas season, we should help somebody who needs help, because the blessed of us must try to save the less of us. And then, and only then do we know that we have made that baby smile. <laughs> There's only one present Billy wants this year. 
Sure, little buddy. What's that? I'd like to go home. Would you take me home? I would love to, little buddy. But somebody else came and do that. And like that, get stuffed is but a distant memory. And Christmas has been saved by Mr. T. God bless us, everyone. Take it from me, Mr. T.